Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to take a look at loading your content into Flash dynamically. And by dynamically, I mean off of your web server um, in such a way that you can just change files in your web server and your Flash file really updates itself, both text and images and even other SWF files. So you can go to tutvid.com right now pause the video and go to the download section of the site and you can download this file right here this loading site content flash 8 and CS3 um, it's on the download page and if you have flash 8 or flash CS3 you will be able to open this file and use it and follow along with the video I have all of the instance names uh, already set for you this dynamic text field and these image boxes and everything and you'll be able to follow along and do exactly what I'm doing and really be able to get a solid grasp of how to load both text and images into your site directly from your web server. Let's take a look at the text first. Now you can create your own text and I highly suggest you do. It could start causing you issues if you copy other people's text. But we have this .txt file here, homepage text.txt. I'm going to double click on that. And Microsoft WordPad, oops, let me minimize that. Bring flash back up. Here we have Microsoft WordPad, or Notepad, excuse me. And here I have this bunch of text. Now the problem is Flash does not just download a text file or reference a text file and read it. You need to make this entire block of text equal a variable. So we're going to do that. We're going to make this entire block of text equal the variable home capital T text. So it's home text, but the text is a capital T equals and then all of this text. Now there are no spaces. Make sure you do not put any spaces. Home text equals welcome to the official site of Rockstar, etc, etc, etc. Now we can also place a second variable or a third and a fourth and a fifth inside of the same text file and we can do that by right at the end of our text file again no spaces we can place an ampersand and we can say well let's just give this the variable home text two equals and then we can say join us today have lots of fun okay make sure you spell join correctly and there we go. And then all we would do is we would save this file, and go file, save, and close that. And then I would upload that file to my web server. Now I have already uploaded that to the tutvid.com server. And I've also uploaded the rest of the files we're going to be using, namely these three images and this one SWF file. So everything that I'm referencing here in the file, you will be able to reference and follow along just like I am doing. Okay? So minimize this. I'm just showing you by the way how to do that text file thing in case you are creating your own dynamic text which presumably is what you want to do. Oh by the way if you're using Mac you can create your text file Windows users use Notepad. Mac users use something uh, like text edit just a, whatever the simplest text editor you have I believe it's text edit on a Mac um, or BB edit is another very simple text editor um, you can just use them, create your .txt files, and you should be fine. So I'm going to minimize bridge, and we're going to come back here into Flash. And actually, let me open up that text file once again just to show you something. Notice that here our ampersand, right here, is sort of the connector between our two different variables, and is you know letting Flash know, okay, you can stop collecting variable information right there because we're going on to another variable. What if you want to put an ampersand or for that matter any special character into your text? Well, you use a process called URL encoding. So let me just run a Google search entitled Flash URL Encoding. I'm going to hit enter and the first entry that comes up is going to be Adobe.com and it's entitled URL encoding reading special characters from a text file and Adobe has here on the site a wonderful little chart and it tells you the character and the code you have to type in order to get that character okay even individual letters 
have codes. As you can see here, you got character code, you got the copyright characters, you've got the pound sign, exclamation mark, there's the ampersand. And you would just type this code in where you want the ampersand, and the ampersand will show up. Or parentheses, or commas, or a one, or an eight, or whatever you want. Okay, so those are the actual codes that you can put in so Flash reads exactly what you want Flash to read. I'm going to minimize Firefox and I will close out Notepad. I just wanted to point that out for those of you who are wondering how that's done. URL encoding, very important. Okay, I have already uploaded these files to the web server as I mentioned a minute ago. So we can really just get started with linking up our Flash file to those files on the web. So this is the flash file you're working with and I have one layer here called master and it contains the master movie clip. If I select it you can see it is an instance of master underscore MC. I'm going to double click into that movie clip and in here I have much more. I have all of these different layers, the background, the logo, the navigation bar, the body, the content boxes which are these two image boxes as well as the box that's going to hold our text. Although that box really technically is not holding our text, it's just going to appear to hold our text. What's going to hold our text is this dynamic text text field. Let me select this text field and you create dynamic text text fields just like you would create a normal text field. You just use the text tool but after you finish creating the text field you select it and over here in the text type instead of setting it to static text you set it to dynamic text and one of the great advantages to dynamic text is well number one you can do things like we're about to do but you can also give it an instance name and a variable, both of which make it quite a bit easier for us to do what we are about to do. In fact, make it possible in the first place for us to do what we're about to do. Now, we're not going to use the variable. We're just going to use my text area, which is our instance name. Okay, I've provided that for you. That is not the default instance name for dynamic text fields. You have to give it a unique name every time you use a different one if it's the same file. All right, and also these content boxes, at least these two on the side here, I have given instance names of load box one and load box two. So let's come up here to the action script layer and get started. I'm going to come up to window and hit actions. Now here's my action script palette. I made it much bigger, so hopefully you will have no problem reading the script I'm about to write. The first thing we need to do is create a variable that holds a new load vars object. So we're going to type the word var, okay, which means we're, this is a variable. We're telling Flash we're setting this aside as a variable. We're going to write my load vars colon data type is a load vars. We're going to say it equals a new load vars. So what we're saying is this variable my load vars is going to be equal to a new instance of the load vars class here. So I'll put a semicolon there, hit enter or return a couple times. Now we are going to begin to load our text. We're going to type that same variable name my load vars. Notice case sensitivity, very important, capital L, capital V. Okay. Important stuff to keep in mind as you are doing this. We're going to say my load vars dot load, and we're going to put an open parenthesis and a closed parenthesis. Now, what this is saying is my load vars. So we want you to take that variable, which is a new instance of the load vars class. We want you to take that new instance of the load vars and load with it. Now, what do you want me to load? I have to put that here inside of these parentheses. And what we want it to load is a specific URL. And that URL is our dynamic text file. So I'm going to put an open quote. I'm going to say HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.tutvid.com forward slash underscore tutvid forward slash home page with a capital P text with a capital T dot txt. And now I'm going to put closed quotes, and that's it. I'm going to come to the outside of that parenthesis, and I'm going to put a semicolon. So we're loading this URL right here, http www.tutvid.com. This home page text file is inside of a folder called underscore tutvid. Matter of fact, if I take this URL, 
copy it, come over to my web browser, and I paste it in and hit enter. Here we go. Home text equals welcome to the official site, yada, yada, yada. And we can just scroll across and we can read everything it says. And we can even find here at the end where we have our second variable, ampersand, home text too. So it's loading all of this here into Flash. Let me get back into Flash. So that's what we have going on here. Our new instance of load vars is loading whatever is at that URL. And right now we have this .txt file at that URL. Okay, I'm going to go to the very end of that line, hit enter or return a few times. Now we need to tell this to place this in the uh, dynamic text field. So again, we're going to type my load bars dot on load. Okay, so when that load vars, when this variable loads, when it finishes doing line three of the, when it finishes doing line three of my code here, when it finishes loading this URL, we want it to do something. And we are going to define what we want it to do using a function. So we're going to say my my load vars dot on load equals function. And the function is going to be based on whether or not this successfully loads. So we're going to type success colon and success whether or not this successfully loads, oh, there's only two possibilities. It either does load or it doesn't load. So that means it's either a true or false data type that this success is going to be gathering. And the true or false data type is a data type called Boolean. So we're going to type Boolean and then a close parenthesis. Um, by the way, that's Boolean with a capital B. And we're going to type open curly bracket, hit enter or return twice, close curly bracket, and up arrow key. Oops, there we go. Now what we need to do is create an if statement. Okay, and this if statement is going to be telling Flash, okay, if my load vars loads this text file successfully, we want you to display it as text. Okay, we want you to display the variable as text. So here's what we need to do. We need to say if, open parenthesis, and you can see the little tooltip here says condition. So we need to put a condition in here. We need to say success equals, oops, equals equals, you gotta put two equal signs when you are checking to make sure something is true or false or is equal to something. So we can say success equals equals true and actually when you are typing an if statement okay like this where we're depending on whether or not the success is true or false we can leave out this entire equals equals true. We can just say if success. Flash knows that by default if success is true. If it is a successful load, we want you to do this. So after that, just type if success, open close parenthesis, then open curly bracket, hit enter or return twice, and then put a closed curly bracket there, and hit up arrow key. Now in here, we need to figure out what the variable for our dynamic text field is. Select the dynamic text field, and it is called my text area, the capital T and a capital A. Okay, let me come back into here. Select our actions frame, and we're going to say my text area dot text. Okay, so the text that is displayed in my text area, we want that text to equal the variable that is in this text file. So the first thing we need to say is this dot home text, and then place a semicolon because home text is that variable that we have inside of our text file. It was that first word that we typed and then put an equal sign after it and then we type the rest of those words that we have in that text file. So now if this works properly, hit F9 to make my actions panel go away. Now we're going to test this movie and if it works properly you're going to see a whole bunch of a text appear right here in the dynamic text field. So I'm going to come up here to control and hit test movie and you can see all of this text has appeared. It's dynamic text right off the, the web server there. Now I'm going to open up the actions palette and I'm going to switch this variable home text to the other variable we had in that document, home text 2. Okay, let's see what happens now. Let's publish that movie. I'm going to hit control enter or command return if you're on a Mac. Now you can see that is a much shorter message that we have. 
Okay, both coming from that same text document, just different variables. All right, I want the original just home text to appear. And there we go. That is our dynamic text. Now, the great thing about this is all we have to do is change our text document and upload a new text document to our web server, and all of this updates automatically. So that's how you do dynamic text. I can now lock up the dynamic text layer. Let's focus on these content boxes here. Now, in order to get images to load in to these boxes, uh, it's actually very, very simple. Let's hit F9 here again on our actions frame. And right underneath our variable here, where we're defining the variable, hit enter or return twice and type the word load and then movie, oops, movie with a capital M. Then just place an open parenthesis and you can see the tooltip is telling us we need a URL, a target, and a method. We're actually not going to worry about method in this. It's not an absolute necessity. URL and target are, however. Open, quote, and we're going to say HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.tutvid.com forward slash underscore tutvid forward slash and here we're going to say img jpg okay and then a closed quote so what we just said is load this movie load this image really off from this url so right like that we're going to load that image now we're going to put a comma because, okay, Flash is loading the image, but now it needs to know where exactly it's going to go. So now we have to define the target. Now this isn't like defining a target in HTML where you define underscore self, underscore blank, anything like that. No, this, we need to know what the instance name of this loading box is. And in this case, the instance name is load box one. The B in box is capitalized. So I am going to say here, load box one. And I'm just going to place close parenthesis and a semicolon. All right. Hit F9 to close that actions palette and hit command return or control enter to test the movie. And you can see we've loaded in an image. Great. Open up the actions palette again. Now I'm going to copy this entire line of code and I'm going to hit enter or return once there. And I'm going to paste it right below it. And now we're going to load image two dot GIF, okay, so now we're loading a JPEG and a GIF file into load box 2. Hit F9 to make that go away, and let's test this. And you can see we've loaded a .gif file and a JPEG file using Flash. Now you can also load SWF files and PNG files. Let's switch this to img3.png, okay, and then down here on this next load movie, we're going to replace this file with tutvid dude.swf all right so now we're loading an swf file into where we just loaded that gif file all right i'm going to hit f9 to make this go away enter or command and command return or control enter to publish the movie and you can see we have an animated swf file and a transparent png file displaying here in our rockstar site so it's really pretty easy to go ahead and do all of this to load some dynamic text and load these images and SWF files uh, all dynamically. Now, obviously, if I upload a new img3.png to the underscore tutvid folder of tutvid.com, this photo as displayed here in this box will change automatically because all Flash is doing is referencing that file. It's calling out to the server and saying, give me this file, and then it displays the file. And if the file changes, well, it's got to display the changed file because that's all that's there to display. So that's how that works, and it's a really great way to build Flash sites, especially if you have a client who would like to be able to control the text that goes into their Flash site, maybe change a couple images here and there, um, and do some stuff like that. That way they don't have to get a hold of you every single time uh, a change has to be made. So it's really great to be able to know how to do this kind of thing here in Flash. And uh, that's it for this one. I really hope you learned something uh, here in this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And I uh, thank you very much for watching. Please go check out the website. That's www.tutvid.com.